Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence with psychiatrist Bernard David Beitman, MD. Dr. Beitman is the founder of The Coincidence Project. The project encourages people like you to tell each other coincidence stories. To learn more about Dr. Beitman's work, put Connecting with Coincidence in your web browser. You'll find his book, his Psychology Today blog, and the interviews from this podcast. And now your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. Yeah, I'm a psychiatrist. And I'm really fascinated by the way the mind and the brain operate together. And psychiatry has got no idea about how mind and brain operate together, except to suggest mind is a product of the brain, which if you think about it, it's really hard to make it up. I mean, how, how do you explain that? So it appears that mind is somewhat separate from the brain, but connected, and just how that works, because mind is connected also with our environment, as our brains are connected to our bodies, our minds are connected to our environments, our bodies are connected to our environments. So we're all interconnected in ways that we don't recognize uh, in this current way of thinking about our reality on this earth. We are part of where we are. We're not standing by ourselves. We're not islands. Coincidences happen in all parts of life, your life, but you got to notice them. We talk about believing is seeing is believing, but believe me, believing is seeing that the way you think about the reality, especially now, especially these days, the way you think about it is what you see. So I'm asking you to think about your coincidences and to tell each other coincidence stories and to read my upcoming book coming out September 13 called Meaningful Coincidences, How and Why Serendipity and Synchronicity Happen. The order link for you on YouTube is, is below and please also um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It just helps get the message out. This uh, this story of mine is entitled June 21, 2022, not too long ago. A new friend of mine named Josh, who loves to josh around and might be best known as a joker uh, or something like that, but he loves to josh around. And Josh introduced me to a person who could quack like Donald Duck. I could also quack like Donald Duck learned when I was five uh, from Richie across the street, uh, who was seven, uh, and I can still do it. <laughs> As a teenager in Wilmington, Delaware, I learned lots of parts of songs, usually romance songs, and as a, an adult, I could sing snippets that fit the current circumstances. So we went over to this new friend, Josh introduced me, Josh, the new friend introduced me to someone named Ruth who was known as the jukebox because she could sing entire songs, many, many of them. So Ruth could do something like I could do and Josh's other friend could also talk about Donald talk, Donald Duck because he could quack, he quacked all over New York City with a friend of his really well. He's a good quacker. Very good. Yes, he was. <laughs> On that same day, Josh and I spent a time recapturing my hippie days from the late 1960s in San Francisco. So Josh on the equinox connected me with the play periods of my past. My, <laughs> my you must remember this as well as my hippie days in the late 1960s. So thanks a lot, Josh. That was a lot of fun that day. <laughs> that was a lot it of was, fun. It was, it was great to meet you, Bertie. And uh, yeah, so. Well, let me go on with the, the intro. Go, go on we'll, with the intro. Go ahead. We'll get you rappy. So who, okay. is, who, who is Josh Silver? Well, he spent four years as a devotee of Swami Muktananda. And he's got a master's degree in counseling psychology. He raised five children, one, two, three, four, five, with his wife of 28 years, mostly free of media, especially during the first 10 years. 
He ran a nonprofit organization devoted towards helping low-income fathers be better parents. He's an active member of Deep Time Network, a worldwide organization to use the universal evolution story to inspire and unite us in a shared global, global context. And he spent the last five years barefooting, he's been barefooting, uh, meditating on the earth, the sun, and the miracles of creation for about four hours nearly every day. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence, Mr. Josh Silver. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bernie. What a treat it is to be here with you and to meet you and to uh, get to play in this uh, amazing universe with you. Well, thanks. thanks. So, so I'll, I'll share some about the, uh, what you were talking about, because I had synchronicities around that too. And it is interesting that right outside me is, uh, I see the Golden Gate Bridge right back there, oh, San wow, Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. As we as we speak, this guy is in Tiburon right now, ladies and gentlemen, north of San Francisco. That's where he is, with the Golden Gate Bridge right over his left shoulder. Okay, <laughs> we can't quite see it. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, I just remember yeah, hanging with you and uh, being so delighted, you bursting in the song. And because so you, and I can't remember why you burst into Daisy Daisy, but uh, you did. And I joined in because that's one of my favorite songs. Uh, it's Daisy, Daisy. I'll, let's, you want to do it together? Yeah, we have to because a lot of people probably don't know it. Okay, ready? Daisy, 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 Daisy give, me give me your, your answer, answer true. true. I'm half crazy. crazy. All for the, the love, love of you. you. So let me just finish. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage, but you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. So um, I sang that with you in Charlottesville, Virginia. Then I got, like right after that, I got a plane to go to uh, something called uh, Lightning in the Bottle in California. And so I arrived there and I get a ride to my camp from somebody and who gives me a ride but someone named Daisy. <laughs> So I'm singing the song to her and she drives me to my encampment, which I, I don't know these people, but this is where I was told to go. I go there and sitting right outside the encampment are two bicycles built for two. <laughs> Daisy, Daisy, took, Daisy took me to those two bicycles sitting there, one for you and one for me, Bernie. And, what? So, <laughs> and so, and then uh, of course the Donald Duck thing. Um, so yeah, and uh, since uh, I'm in California, the, the story was is that, yeah, I was uh, helping you reconnect to your hippie days and we uh, took a couple of hits of, of cannabis and um, which had been given to me by my friend. And um, I said, well, let's call him up and tell him how much we're enjoying it. So I call him up and then all of a sudden he starts, oh no, right, I call him up and I'm, this is what happened. I'm talking to my friends uh, and saying how good it was. And this, and this child walks by with a dad and you just start talking Donald Duck to the child, just spontaneously talking Donald Duck to the child. And then I just, then I lost it because my friend is the only person who's on the phone is the only other person who I know talks Donald Duck. So I had, <laughs> so I just heard you guys <laughs> doing Donald Duck back and forth for a few minutes. And I just was just roaring with laughter, just the, <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and Day, of course, so Donald Duck and Daisy, Daisy Duck is his, uh, his love interest. So Daisy, so Daisy was there too. And, um, and I'll just say the last thing is that um, in terms of global consciousness, I see that we need to bring the masculine and the feminine together, the yin and yang together. And, but if we bring the masculine and feminine together, we need both of them, but the female has to have top billing. We have to put more importance on the feminine. And so uh, the daisy overrides the, the daffy duck in this case. So um, with that, uh, I think I'm ready to start exploring more with you, Bernie. Well, <laughs> daisy and the bicycle built for two. I like the story that you ran into the bicycle built for two with the help of daisy uh, yes. and daisy duck. Uh, and for me, you and I were riding a bicycle built for two on the 
June 21st, the equinox. So we were riding through space on a bicycle built for two. And yeah. you were in the front, really, because uh, even though I was driving the car, you took us over to Ruth's house where you had right. to, where you were staying that night. And right. I tried to warn Ruth about my bursting into song and then she told me that she was the jukebox so <laughs> what was what was that like for you to do to to see that that Ruth and I could do songs uh, like that uh, like that yeah well it's it's I mean of course being in your field I mean we 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 create a field around us and I know you exist in a synchronicity field so it's it was delightful for me to see that and also natural like um coming to expect that synchronicity is the fabric of the universe and that to the extent that we're not trapped in our more small more smaller way of looking at the at the big picture if we're not seeing the big picture um to the extent that we're we're just free to be in creation, then synchronicity is happening all the time. And so to welcome that and to see it as, as a natural part of this amazing creation. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's a lot about the way you're living these days after having been a parent for a long time, right? Five kids and uh, a major responsibility for raising them. Right. However, Dr. Coincidence, otherwise known as me, uh, <laughs> likes to be able to look at personal responsibility and making it happen. Yeah. So even though the universe, however you think about that, and it's like the fabric of the universe and that's what happens, yes, that's what happens. And I'm trying to suggest to people that these things happen a lot, pay attention to them. I'm trying to be able to say that in a way that people can recognize, which is why I'm glad you're on the show with me because that's how you experience things. But you, yeah, I, 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 I can I can respond to that. Can I respond to that? That's where we're getting to. Please do. Okay. So yeah, the alignment with with creation, the alignment with with um with 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 how life unfolds is the the realm of synchronicity. Um, and so to the extent, so I've I've right, and taking responsibility for things makes us more aligned. So I feel like one reason I'm so open to it now in my life is because I fulfilled my responsibility in terms of, um, in, in Indian society, and I, that's my spiritual home is India, they talk about three phases of life, the youth student phase, the householder phase, and then the sannyasin phase. Like the last phase of your life, after you finish raising a family, then in India, traditionally, you're free to go join the monastery, go to be with God, to go access that. And I believe that's what I've done. And the fact that I completed uh, 28 years until my son was 18, being in the home and raising this family, and now I'm, I'm available in whatever way. But that, because I'm rooted in that, then now I can open to the ineffable. And, um, and synchronicity is the way the ineffable shows up here. So Beautifully um, said. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Uh, you, you're having more fun than being in a cave. Uh, I'll tell you that. I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what those Indian guys, some of them did. They go up in the Himalayas and disappear, yeah. supposedly. Yeah, well, I mean, you're free to join. The, I mean, traditionally, I, I've heard it as free to join the monastery, go to, but the, my monastery is, is nature. Yeah, my monastery great. is the earth. It's everywhere. And of course, I, have to, I just have to say the daisy, I, didn't, I just thought of this too. Daisy is a flower. You were talking about Daisy, so that another connection back to Earth because, um, well, the aside, I'll just, it's, this isn't about synchronicity, but I, I see that the global consciousness is in such despair because we're separated from nature, that that's the primary thing that's going on. Say that again, say that again, say the that primary, again. That, that the primary dis ease is being cut off from nature. We're not at and so everything else is a symptom of that. And this has been a process that's been going on for, you know, many, I mean, it got exacerbated by agriculture 10,000 years ago. And then it's just been a continual and increasing separation from nature until we have a world now where 
there, there are people who will go through life and never have a direct experience of nature, will not, never touch it even, which is so anathema to our spirit and our well-being. And so um, synchronicity would necessarily lead us back into this connection to nature if we fall, if that's, if it's guiding us to alignment with the creative genius of the universe. Yeah, that's part of the reason that I wanted to talk with you on podcast is that you know that experientially, that you connect with nature and that connects you with uh, a greater consciousness, makes you feel more part of it. And that's what so important a message to to have it's it, it, i want to i want to i want to keep with that question um but there's also a nagging question that i want to get through here because i'm still so curious <laughs> about it um after you after ruth and i discovered that we can pop up songs at any time and she, she knows a lot more than I do and can sing many more of them. But I like to think maybe I sing them a little better, but that's just my thing. Uh, you also had were connecting with a woman on YouTube and what we're watching her do a meditation while we were taking a walk uh, right. by the river. And right. so suddenly she's thrust in my face on the phone and uh, you're getting me to quack with her. What was that about? Getting you to quack with her. You wanted me to quack at her. <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> I, 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 I got lost in yeah all the quackery, I, I guess. In, I, in the quackery. Okay, that's good. You got lost <laughs> in all the quackery. Well, what, one of the important questions is how has synchronicity guided you in your life? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, tell the story. Um, and it, it looks better on paper where you can see the letters and the words, but this has been a guiding thing for my life, which is, um, my daughter's birth, um, first daughter, my first daughter's birth. And, um, so her, her we, we came up with the name Hana Maya Joy, um, and Hana Maya. And I didn't know anyone named Hannah, but I liked it. It's the Hebrew word for grace. And so um, the day after we, we had a day naming, a baby naming ceremony. And the next day I saw, I was at a wedding and the sister of the bride, her name was Hannah. First person I named was Hannah. Her middle name was May. So May is M-A-Y-A. -A. This woman's name was M-A-Y. So Hannah May. And so that was like, what I could also say is that we hadn't named the baby for six weeks. It was a home birth. And we only named her the night before at the temple. This is official naming. And so there's a lot of question, is this right? Even this whole having a child was very questionable to me. Like, is this um, the right thing to do? And so that confirmation of that, that synchronicity. And then I called my grandmother and I said, Grandma, we finally named the baby. We named her Hannah. And she said, I had a, a, a cousin named Hannah Mayer, M-A-Y-E-R. So when those two things happened, it made me aware that there's something beyond me that's operating and that my mind, I might have doubts, but there's something bigger than me operating here. And I, and I was coming from a place of service and I trusted my place of service to where I was coming from. And this was a confirmation that this was right, this, this family. Um, and then there's a further confirmation um, that a year later, I'll just say this quickly because it's also very significant that my name is, my Hebrew name is Yahshua Yaakov, Y-A. And my wife's name was Mary Manning, M-A-M-A. -M -A, and I'm Y-A-Y-A. -Y -A, so you put that together and you get my Yah. And which is also representing the masculine and feminine forces. So uh, that made me even more aware there's something bigger going on here. And that my job is to surrender to these forces, which synchronicity is, is how it shows up for me. I, I, I've spent 46 years on a spiritual path 
done lots of meditations, but I've never seen a vision. I've never had any kind of non-ordinary psychic phenomenon, but <laughs> the world talks to me. It, 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 that's how I, that's how I align with, with something that's, that, that I'm on the right path. It keeps me on track. I and, think it's very um, important to, to say what you mean by the, the world talks to you. And I think I know what you mean. I think right. it means what it tends to mean to me is that it's like, I'm here in this reality. Uh, and there's enough weird stuff going on right here that I can use my senses for my regular senses my eyes and my ears and my body to feel the feel them there's enough going on here that I can like um, see a lot of of these miracles of synchronicity happening right in front of me I don't need telepathy clairvoyance and precognition right. Uh, right. I, ne I need to just keep my eyes on what's here because there's a lot of stuff going on right here exactly right right and and it, and they, it shows up in all these ways these are i have a lot of synchronicities with wordplay and numbers that's uh, that happens to me over and over again but also it shows up i was just going to say there was at one point a low point in my life and i woke up one morning in charlottesville in the middle of the city and i was really questioning I, I, like what what am i doing with my life this is like 10 years ago and i went outside and just stood out there on the grass in the middle of Charlottesville, there's all these buildings and out of a blue sky, a lightning bolt came right down, right, like right in my field of vision. And that was also a confirmation. Like I would just, I went out, I went outside to, to, to open to inspiration and, and connection. And that just came in and that, that really helped me maintain this, what many would say is a crazy life uh, that I've been living. And I've gotten a lot of criticism from a lot of people over the years, like, what are you doing? And, um, and I've used synchronicity as my guide to, um, to well, feel that, like that, I'm on the right track. That lightning bolt, yeah. when you were, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what I'm doing, when you were lost and alone, and yeah. kind of, where do I go, what do I do, and blah, blah, blah. The lightning bolt is a lightning bolt. There is your, it's, we'll call it just a lightning bolt to start. Okay. It's, they Good. do that a lot. It, yes. It happens, it happens a lot. Uh, it doesn't necessarily happen right when you go outside, when you're And it doesn't happen in a blue sky. It doesn't happen without any storm anywhere. Without any storm. It does sometimes. There's light. It does, it, right, right. It, it's called a bolt. It's, it's, it's a bolt from the blue. Yeah, it, it, but well, it, it happens, but not yes. that commonly. And right. it happened right when you walked out. But it's a lightning bolt and you have a question. So it's a good illustration of how coincidences like this one don't tell you what to do. They're guides, they're not commands. How, does, exactly. how do you relate, explain to us how this was a guide and not a command? Good, yeah, that's a great question. Um, right. Um, because when, uh, when you're open to synchronicity and your book does a really great job, this one <laughs> that I'm looking at, in fact, I was just reading, uh, about that it can be psychotic and that a lot of mental health professionals feel like that's even the hallmark of psychosis is to be looking for coincidences. That's schizophrenia. And so to, to, and that's uh, the idea of what's the, the, the best set and setting. Uh, what's the best context in which to see synchronicities. And so um, it's played out for me that by um, having my intent be, how can I be of service? How can I, how can I be in service in the world? And then to, I feel like that can elicit um, responses from uh, my experiences it elicits responses from the universe well let's say that may have something to do with the lightning at that time without right. us, us being able to know right and that would be not a usual experience just to add to right. what we were talking about before yeah. but let's say somehow you felt that this was a good time to go out there and you could feel the energy around you and that maybe a lightning bolt without knowing it was it could strike then because i believe we have the capacity okay. to pick up stuff right. it still doesn't mean 
that it was a confirm it, ha- it still doesn't mean it's a confirmation unless exactly. you decide it's a confirmation it, it, exactly in that case it was more uh amorphous and i i just felt when that happened i could just feel like it's okay you're on the right track keep going that's what that uh, now i have i have a better one that's very was very specific well, let, so, well let's, let's, I want to hear that one, but let, yeah. let's stay with this one. Sure. That we can interpret these low probability events in a way that suits us. Right. You needed confirmation. You got something that you could interpret as confirmation. And, right. and that's your final decision. And that's important for the people listening and watching to know that is that it can happen their their guides potential guides but you decide what it means for your decision about what you need to be able to decide about right and that's why i go back to what i said the optimal set and setting for me the optimal set and setting is how can i be of service that's the optimal set and setting and then because you can have synchronicities that just that are going to confirm your psychosis and we all have are all we all have our our outmoded strategies of operating the world that lead us in off track and so synchronicities if they're everywhere are going to show up and they can reinforce that and that's where uh you know, mental health professionals talk about you know get concerned about that this is leading you off from the rational and and, and that's i guess that's an important point too is, is that to me there's there's this rational world that operates that's so phenomenal that gives us this all this technology and, and so many things but there's something that's beyond that creation like it it's not rational that there's a particle and a wave and they're, they're simultaneously happening. That, I mean, there's all sorts of, you know, quantum physics has all sorts of things that's not rational, but it is the foundational of what's happening here. So, um, but, and so we need to include that. We need the rational and the, however you want to say it, the beyond rational or whatever, the context in which the rational arises within. Yeah, the context within which the rational arises. Very good. Very good. I, I, you make me come up with meta-rational, meta-rational. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's about rational. It isn't rational. It's something else about it that since I, I like talking about yeah. meta, but that's. Yes. That's, when you say meta, meta, I think of physical that way. There's physical and there's metaphysical. Yeah. But it's rooted in the physical too. It's not separate. So much of spirituality is like separate from the physical and that's synchronicity is a way to, to, bring them together yeah I, I i agree i very much agree uh and and let's talk about um you as a as a kabbalist <laughs> okay because you you um have the earmarks you you have the earmarks of what the kabbalists do josh huh. uh, is they that uh, people have a lot of different ways of get getting mystical getting up into uh, higher consciousness, but the the old Jews of uh, of the Kabbalah uh, in Svat in Israel in the 1500s, for example, uh, but other places before that, uh, were into what you're into. They're into wordplay and into 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 numbers, and the numbers and the words uh, were clues to how things work for the Kabbalists. Wow. Uh, it's it, the it, the tree of life. The Eitz Chaim is like got a lot of words and numbers in it uh, that and images that try to describe the way reality works. <laughs> and it's it's important for both for both of us and for other people paying attention. These these guys were saying they had a map of how the universe works. So when I read that, I said, "Well, I got to pay attention to this because yeah. if they're claiming this, I got to find out how it works." So I got very much into tarot cards, which were an active way of uh, learning about how the tree of life in this map operate. You, you do words. And part of the fun of words for me are words that sound the same, <laughs> but have different meanings, okay. otherwise known as homonyms. Mm-hmm. And you, you know what I'm talking about here. Right. Oh, so, uh, well, soul, soul earthing is that one you like, right? So, so what I practice is soul earthing, which is connecting the sun and the earth. And I'm the conduit between that. So soul, when you say soul earthing, you could spell it S-O-L, 
which is for, uh, son, for, son. for son. You could spell it um, S O L E, soul earthing. So my feet, my souls are, are in the earth. And then if you put yourself in the middle of that, you get S O U L. And so then you're in the middle of sun and earth, which is also um, how I refer to myself. I refer to my identity um, as I am a product of the four and a half billion year history of sun and earth and that which brought for all this forward. So I am, uh, I expand my identity to be that four and a half billion year process. So that's she. So I do put myself in the middle of sun you didn't and say earth. The, you didn't say the human. Sun. Oh, sun, human, earth. S-H-E is she. So, um, which is also uh, one of my names was Joshi. So, or Yashi. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, I feel like <laughs> part of what I'm after is, ha is to have the synchronicities make me laugh out loud, that the universe wants me to laugh out loud and in delight at this play. So, um, yeah. So it's, 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 it's easy to happen. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun things that happen in that way. Um, so. Josh was a joker. I was good at plenty <laughs> joker. I mean, you, you are a joker. You Josh around. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, and that's part of the fun of all this is to see how these words may influence the way we think about ourselves. Yes. They're clues about how reality works. I just ran across more clearly um, how he, people in the United States or people who speak English, when they say, when they're parting with someone, what do they do? They advise them to be consumers huh. by, by saying, bye. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so we need a new one. <laughs> and it, it, there's a couple more with that. I mean, there's there's yeah. by as in by what b y e b y e. Yeah. There's b u y, which is what that yeah. that sounds yeah. like. But there's there's by the by. There's passing by. Uh huh. And by there's by. there's the by that's come to mean someone who's has two, two. sexes, who's yeah. who's both. By who by. was interested in sex from the so yeah. the word by is by is has four homonyms associated with it four by. words yes spelled differently that have the same meaning and the kabbalistic way of looking at those is to say there's something about all four of them that, that ties them together somehow mm -hmm. and then uh, you could be b i to be i <laughs> but anyway, uh, sometimes you can go too far <laughs> well for me you just did josh yeah exactly <laughs> but but that but that's an important thing even with synchronicities because sometimes you can get the main thing and then your mind's going and it's it's like trying to make more things and that's that's what you're you just want to be with what just comes organically so i'm going to tell you this story because this is a good one about being guided by my life. And this was, this was really significant to me. So um, yeah, about three or four years ago, I, as you say, I love playing. I have these discs. I, 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 I'm all about play. And, um, but I'm also, I've been on the spiritual quest where I, for five plus years outside barefoot for four hours. And so, um, you know, a year or two into that, I just was like, is this right? I wasn't thinking it just happened, uh, you know, organically, we kept going, but it's like, okay, I'm going to settle down. I'm going to get a real job. Everyone's you know, like complaining about my life. It's like, okay, I'll get a real job. And um, I was going to call up a, a holistic coach to help uh, create a whole thing about being play and to do it in, in uh, South, South Florida, where my family is and work with old people and get them to play. And I had all the, like, it was all worked out. I was going to do this. So I'm on my way to make the call. I'm at my river doing my worship time and I'm walking to my car. I'm walking across this grass. It's like 10 feet of grass. And just before I get to my car, I stepped on something that was hidden in the grass. I couldn't see it. And it, and it, was, a, and it was glass and it punctured my foot. Oh. And what it was, was it was a votive candle that you put, a, you put a candle in. It was like the glass surrounding it. And it had, it had already been broken. And there was a part that was pointing up and it, it it punctured my foot. And when I looked to see what was on it, 
there was a marijuana leaf and it said high and, and, the, and the word high on it. And I instantly made that mean that I needed to continue with my earth-based practice, which um, I do use cannabis. I do use marijuana in a sacred way. I went 25 years not using it when I was doing my spiritual work and when I was with my family. Um, and then I've gradually been using it as a way to, um, as well, in, indigenous to, uh, to India. Uh, there's uh, ganja smoking sadhus who've been doing this for thousands of years. So I use it in a sacred way. And what I got was I needed to continue on this path of, 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 of using cannabis in conjunction with nature to achieve a certain state um, and to not, and to put off play that I wasn't going to do that now. I was going to continue on this path. And um, I, I, don't, I don't understand quite the difference here between the path that you were leaving and the path you're getting to. If I was going to move to Florida and do play, where, where at the time cannabis was way not legal, and it was just, I was going to just do the outer, like I'm going to do something out rather than I've been on, my life has been surrounded, has been focused on developing this inner, these inner qualities and this inner alignment with creation. And so what I got was this message was continue on that path of going inward and um, until further notice. And how did you make that interpretation, Josh? Because it was a cannabis leaf that, that punctured, that, what punctured me from the earth, coming out of the earth was a cannabis leaf. <laughs> and so it was very clear to me that this was getting my attention. I was supposed to pay attention to the earth and the cannabis leaf. It said, hi, I'm here, hi, <laughs> don't forget me. And so that's what I did. That's, that's how I used it to guide, guide me. Yeah, it said, hi, I'm here, uh, go into nature. So what did you end up doing? Well, that's, that, as I said, I've been standing outside barefoot for four hours a day. <laughs> but did you go to Florida? No, I didn't go to Florida. No, I, <laughs> I, I, oh, I'm sorry. So I, I got, I got, I, I went to the, I mean, I had a call scheduled for eight o'clock in the morning. I got on the phone with, with the person and I said, hi, I, I thought I was going to do this coaching thing with you and have you, you know, set up a website and all that. But I just decided that I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> Hi, hi, Vic, hi, Young. So you, you, you took that message. Again, it's like lightning. You, you, you puncture your foot on a votive candle glass, and there's a marijuana leaf saying hi on it. It's still, you have to interpret that. You have to bring your own <laughs> right. experience to that. And your own experience right. was, I'm going to keep going to the outer world I'm about to, and do a coaching thing, website, blah, blah, blah. But somehow in your calculating, and this is so important for people listening and watching us, is that in your calculation, you took that as no, you've got to go into nature and barefoot and use cannabis as part of nature, the way the gurus that you knew about were doing mm -hmm. it in India. Yes. So, that that you brought your own past experiences to this interpretation yes. about and at a decision point that was crucial for you and i and and i have a lifestyle um where i have a lot of freedom and so that allows makes it more easy for me to get a message and not be attached to how i'm already doing something I'm not, I don't have a path. I don't like say, this is what I'm going to do. And this, uh, it's, it's always co-creative. I have an intention and then I play with the ecosystem to gu help guide the specifically how it arises in the moment. Beautiful. And what you're, what you're trying to tell us is that the information for what you need is just right in front of you. You don't have to get deeply mystical. You just have to pay attention to what's now because what's now uh, expands way out there. And you can like see these things as messages to you that you mm -hmm. need to be able to pay attention to it because you're more fluid than people caught in rigid ways of behaving. You're mm -hmm. able to like 
loosen your direction and move with the flow of what you're interpreting right. the coincidence to mean for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, 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 now I see what you, um, how you stepped on the glass and <laughs> stepped into nature more deeply. Yeah. And it was, it, was, it was in grass too, of course, which is another funny thing, right? Smoking grass. Is, it was in no, the grass. I, nobody uses grass anymore. Josh. I know, but I do. <laughs> I do too. I, I, know, I'm I glad understand. You do too. I, I, I know. We're, we're, old, fo we're old, old hippie fogies. Yeah, old hippie. Old hippie. It's, it's a <laughs> weed. And they're not weeds, man. The grass is prettier than weeds. But anyway, <laughs> weeds. But, but, but that's what it is. It's 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 weeds. Okay, I I gotta I gotta I'm gonna do do my song now because uh, it fits. Uh, <clears throat> so it. Uh, Gracias. It's the gracias chant. Gracias. Gracias. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Gracias. Then it's grass is us. Grass is us because we are connected to grass. And of course, <laughs> I do that. And then grace is us. Grace is us. So I, I chant that. And so it's, it's all three. It's combining the grace, the universal. It's providing the, the gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to this ecosystem and all of life and then grass is us connection to the earth thank you thank you thank you for that so it, it's that's the wordplay that that links the three worlds together yeah well that's what you love to do because they are clues to you and could be to others about how things operate and what you did was go from the lower to the middle to the uh, upper and that's what you do with your son human and earth yes uh, here's my question yeah. for you about the soul, for example, the soul, we talked about a little bit, the play with S-O-L as son and S-O-U-L as the person's soul and as S-O-L-E as the soul of the foot. You punctured the soul of your foot. <laughs> You've punctured your soul. Yes. What's, what's yeah. with that? How, did, how do you do that one? Well, you know, uh, a lot of traditional uh, cultures and practices is about you know, go cutting yourself and bleeding and, and, and connection. I just with a friend in Joshua tree and he, he just stopped and he, he bled him, you know, he punctured himself so he could share his blood to connect to, to the tree. And so, um, yeah, so that's just a way of, and that, uh, as you say it, I'm thinking it's also bringing together inside and outside to, to bring, to play with the polarities. Um, and then blood is the life force. Like it's it's the it's the water. It's it, physically it, it 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 equates to water, the flow, blood. And so, um, yeah, what a beautiful. I mean, thanks you for uh, even enlarging that whole that I was punctured. I mean, my soul was punctured. Yeah. By by nature, and that's how I feel. I feel like she's. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't use the word puncture, but she's just taken me. Like I am hers. And she uses me, and that's uh, that's my way of 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 the polarities too of, of of masculine and feminine, which I equate with sun and earth. The sun is that yang force, you know, sending out the energy and, and providing that that nurturing and that protection and that guidance. And then the earth receives it. It's the feminine receives that which the male brings forward, and then creates all this beauty, creates life, just as a woman or all any feminine creates life from the masculine that starts it off and then they <laughs> they really know what to do with it and as my dad the rabbi said he said god created adam took a look at him and said i can do better than that and created eve so i feel that uh once again the masculine and feminine we need all of them but we need the feminine to really step into her true power which is connection from nature and uh uh, that's responsible for all of this this beauty and harmony yes 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 when, yes when you when you talk about uh the beauty and connection i hear you and i'm still stuck with your foot getting stuck by the glass <laughs> because if you don't take care of that you can get a pretty good infection <laughs> yeah you could <laughs> If you have to and, 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 no, no, I, no. Well, um, no, I didn't have to do anything. It, it was a, uh, it was a glancing blow. It's uh, you're an athlete, dude. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still an athlete. You know, there's, 
Oh, you're in good shape. You're in good shape. Good okay, shape. But I mean, we take blows all the time. I mean, that's how we grow is we we absorb we absorb some something and we respond. We we yeah, makes and, us stronger. And, and what you did was welcome this blow into your life mm -hmm. and allowed it to help give you momentum to make a significant change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome the blow from below. Yeah. Below. below. <laughs> Swing. <laughs> now, what what I'm curious about is your experience of nature. I mean, I, I've I've seen you deeply uh, involved with a tree outside mm -hmm. of dance a couple of weeks ago, so I know that you connect with trees and other living things out there that ain't human, um, but are natural out there. So tell us about your experience of nature and what role synchronicity might play with. Your experience well we'll see if synchronicity weaves into it um but i'm going to focus on my experience of nature um as i mentioned i was with this teacher for four years swami muktananda who practiced guru disciple relationship and um well i'll just weave synchronicity into it because we're on a synchronicity show so i met muktananda whose name means the bliss of freedom on july 4th 1976, our bicentennial. Um, so that was a good day to meet the bliss of freedom. Um, on the 40th anniversary of that, um, I knew I was going to have a rebirth. And, and what I experienced at, on that day was that I experienced myself being born or recognizing that I am a child of the Father, Son, Mother, Earth. That I, as I said before, I'm a, this four and a half billion year process that they've been involved in. So at that point, I started worshiping sun and earth in the same way that a traditional uh, Indian would worship the guru, which is you, you worship that, that perfection that you want to become. And so I see every moment as this perfect unfolding of creation through sun and earth that in this sector of the universe, that's how creation shows up as sun and earth. Um, so what that means is, is that as I'm standing there in my meditation, I am absorbing sun and earth and their qualities and their attributes in order to become that. Uh, and so of course, anything of nature, um, well, there are different aspects of it. One is that I am, I consider myself a fellow life form as all the other living things that come out of earth. Um, and I remember when I started standing outside and you know, as I said, I've never had psychic phenomenon. I mean, what I, what's interesting about my story is I was born in New York City uh, as a male in the 1950s. And so being born in Manhattan, so my experience of nature as a baby, my first two years was to be, was to have to close down from all the, 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 the sounds, the honking, all the, the cacophonous sounds, the smells, the lead gasoline. I, I had to close down my my way of being in nature. And, and until recently, I lived with nature as a, as a backdrop. I didn't, I, I wanted to experience nature, but I really wasn't. And that's one reason why cannabis actually has been a good tool for me. Cannabis has helped me open because I have been so desensitized in general, as I would say all of us in this culture are for the most part. Um, so, so I worship everything of nature. I worship, it. Um, and so trees <laughs> are a great way, especially because I have a standing practice. Uh, I love being with trees and trees. Actually, that is when I talk about my meditative practice, what I tell people is um, because I'm trying to get out of out of any conceptual thinking or any analytical thinking. So to just stand outside and be a tree, just be like a tree, feel your, your feet rooted in the earth, feel yourself reaching up towards the sun in the universe and, and, and simply allow yourself to be tree-like. Um, and so, and to be as the tree does, to stand there and to receive the energy of the sun and to photosynthesis is something that developed. I mean, one cell creatures develop photosynthesis. I mean, we have 60 trillion cells. We have, we're, our, our, the cells in our body that are like banana cells are like 60% similar to banana cells. We have these capacities in us that are, that are dormant. And so uh, part of my uh, thinking 
has been, well, uh, I don't know what's possible, but I feel that I'm doing a good thing by opening my capacities to sun and earth. And, and, and as a tree developed photosynthesis, what capacities am I developing in my body? And also I think of my consciousness as, as like a body. How am I developing capacities in that way? Um, so that's a big story of, of uh, my orientation to nature. Um, and so uh, I can tell you synchronicity around uh, trees. Well, let's uh, do tell me that that Go ahead. Uh, I want to want to yeah. add that one of the um, powers or abilities that I saw uh, a long time ago as possible was um, to be able to live on light without yes. having to eat. And the best way to do that is to be able to photosynthesize, is to make the stuff from the light that's around us. Thank you. Uh, and that's a, a, a wonderful uh, future potentially for human beings because we don't have to de keep destroying the earth. Uh, we can at least manufacture some of what we need from uh, in our own bodies. So I think that's a very good implication of what you were just talking about. Very good one. And, and Bernie, I really thank you for bringing that up because that is part of what's been going on for me too, is that I eat a lot less. And I feel like I know that I get energized and that I am being energized by this process, by the soul earthing process. Yeah, yeah I, I very much believe that. Uh, um, oh, let me just tell this quick story because I just thought of it about being a tree because when I first okay. started doing it, I think, I don't know if I said this, but I said, to, I said to all the life forms, I said, hey guys, I'm new to the team. I don't know how to do this well, but I'll just show up and do the best I can. But, you know, just take me as I am. I'm not very good at this. So that was... Um, <laughs> coming from my background of desensitization. So that really is, has stood me, stood me well. And, and that as I'm standing there, my practice is always as I am. Like I want to be with, with creation as it is. And the way the access to that is as I am. So I'm, you know, I want to be open. I want to have these amazing experiences, but, to the, but it's always served by my being just as I am. And then things come to me rather than me trying to, have experiences or get experiences i just trust that whatever i need is freely given to me yeah it's amazing we call that far out and groovy josh <laughs> yeah man <laughs> call that far out and groovy uh, i think there's a, a a back and forth on that one i think you've got to set intentions and then you got to let them go which people talk about a lot but it, 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 there have to be useful potentially uh, possible um, uh, intentions and you set the stage for them to happen and you've set the stage for you by just being you i mean to to just be who you are now is a wonderful thing to be able to do uh, and you're able to do that more and more and stuff happens that seems to be able to confirm that this is a good way for you to be running around in on earth uh yeah. being uh sun human earth connected uh, as yeah. the she uh running around um making and and spreading the fairy dust of your uh experience to other yeah. people because part of what you're doing and you kind of know it is like trying to get other people to be themselves to be now and to be able to connect with the trees and the the non-human things that you go out and and say i don't know what i'm doing so please just take me the way i am what kinds of things happen to you when you go out into the forest and you say that and experience that what happens that's a great question hold it because what you said sparked a, a great thing about um what i was thinking of about bringing this forward which was um which is through dance like dance is is has been foundational for me to build the muscle of being open and being authentic and and i just say that because we met at dance i i, I only know you because we dance together and you do that too and and so that is a is, to me is the ideal way is, is authentic movement is that that our body is our 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 soul signature 
and how we move in this moment is is how we show up and so um and to do that with other people is also is a whole uh, i'll talk i can talk about that later how powerful that can be but so i'll, I'll go back to your question now what you what did you just ask me that when you when you open yourself up and say mm -hmm. i'm just being i'm me right now i'm right. here i'm me mm -hmm. um, i'm here yeah with you and i don't know what i'm doing but i'm as much here with me as you with being who i am mm -hmm. right now yeah. as i can and so the the trees and other living yeah. in the forest somehow respond to that and that's what i'm asking you about how do they respond um well, I thought you were going to ask me how I respond oh, to it's it. Both. What, what, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. What what comes up for me? Yeah. And, um, all sorts of things come up um, spontaneously from that from that the field, um, and so um, and I, I so when I'm out there, I'm just allowing. So I'm going to I I, talk, I think in terms of right brain, left brain. E. McGilchrist is. He just wrote a 1500 page book after a 500 page book about uh, right brain, left brain. And just um, so there's a simplistic way of thinking about it. Um, and I'm sort of going to draw on that. There's the holistic and then there's there's the individual perspective of it. And so I go back and forth between those two as I'm standing there. So I can be standing there as as she as that was worship sun and earth. So I feel a natural arising of this awe. So my mind will go to, oh my God, it's uh, you know a hundred million miles away, looking at the sun, hundred million miles away, and this is this beautiful warmth on my body, and I'm just in awe of that. Um, I go into breathing practices where I'm breathing in the universe, holding it inside myself, and then sending it into the earth, and then reversing it. So there's breathing in the earth and holding it, and, and breathing out to the universe. Um, so they're breathing practices that, that, that I've developed that have come to me. Um, there's inspirational thoughts about that this, and, and gra gratitude. Gratitude is, the, is, is, the, is so powerful. It's the appropriate response to this recognition of, I am this four and a half billion year process and this body, this body is simply the product of the ancestors of my ancestors i did nothing for this body my ancestors who came together and had children for going back you know species wise how long you know it's gone back millions of years all of that is i experienced an upwelling of gratitude for all of that went into being here um and so as i stand there in this creation i feel that and i'm open that these glorious thoughts <laughs> come to me and these inspiring thoughts and you know that I'm the universe's way of, of experiencing itself uh that all that, that that's what she wants me to do is to revel in this creation and to receive the gift share the gift and thank you thank you bring us more so all may share this and all sorts of sort of chants and phrases like that just spontaneously arise um yeah, that's uh, it's this organism wants to maximize its well-being, and I'm witnessing that happening. Uh, yeah, I'm witnessing it and I'm experiencing it simultaneously. <laughs> the organism wants to maximize its well-being. Yeah. The organism yes. wants to maximize its well-being. Yeah. And so your organism goes out there and says, I'm just me right here. This is me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm getting better at it. And I am going to be with you. I am going to experience with you the magnificence, the miracle of existence and recognize that I am uh, the product of a long evolutionary set of stages and creations. And I didn't have anything to do with getting this body i'm in it uh, and i'm going to use 
this body and my mind out there in nature to uh, allow me to connect with the oneness and the, of the, and the miracle of all this connectiveness. And it's going to make me feel a lot better when I do that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Receive the gift, share the gift. It's, it's, it's the natural response to being in this creation. Are you, are you running around trying to get people to do the same thing so they can increase their well-being? well uh i feel like i'm uh this is july 4th this is my spiritual birthday that i just i just experienced and um this podcast and other things in my outer life i've been waiting <laughs> i've been i mean i do it whenever i dance whenever i'm with people i i'm i'm interacting with them but in terms of a bigger way um i see this podcast as as this time of 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 launching me into being more out of like I've, I, I feel like I've completed this inner cycle on this uh, uh, just this past birthday just just happened July 4th and so um, and I see the outer world organizing me towards sharing this in a more systematic formal way and, um, and being and being on this podcast is a way of confirming what you thought you were about to be doing anyway exactly exactly and that's and that's that's synchronicity the fact that we met and we had this great connection you saw me with the tree i mean all these things daisy daisy all these things led for this to happen in order for this organism like now the organism the well-being it's 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 looking for is to how can i spread this in the most natural uh, joyful way and that's what you're doing on this uh, show. That's what you're talking about, which is <laughs> yep. kind of why I wanted to be on this. Uh, I mean, I, your nature connection, but also we had a good time. I mean, yeah, man, <laughs> that's the idea. It's like have a good time and and learn something at the same time. That, that's the that's the whole idea. Have experiences to expand yourself because having a good time, having fun, is like a way to do it. And how how do you do that? You, you do that by immersing yourself in the present, which is what we did on the river and just getting into like the rapidy dappity dappity stuff and getting to like feel it and know it and go for it. And then the, one of the cool things was you wanted me to separate from you so you could listen to that YouTube or watch the YouTube video of the woman who is doing the meditation. Right. And that was so cool because it's important that when you get in a good connection with somebody to be also able to separate it because the, this sine wave thing of connection and disconnecting Everything. just is so important to be able to, yes. say, okay, Josh, I've had enough of you. Well, you had enough of me. You had, you wanted me gone. And then I said, okay, well, okay. But then I, okay. And then, so we separated and then I started walking myself back and then you showed up and like, get out of here josh with reading this i'm <laughs> i'm caught up with myself so when you when you're having a good friend and you can say stuff like that and yeah. know that you're not hurting anybody's feelings but just expressing how you're feeling in relationship to that person that's yeah. an important part of being able to relate to somebody i've used that now since mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. to be able to feel freer about saying yes or no goodbye hello uh, and that I appreciate that that yeah. learning that with you. Yeah, cool. Well, I love the sine wave um, because uh, one of the motifs that that plays throughout is is playing with the polarities that we live, and 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 how to do that. And and every I mean, polarities are everywhere. It's it's uh, um, it's the nature of life on Earth. Earth. Yeah, and and and, and light, light and is light. Is, is a, it's a player of the polarities. Okay, so I, as we get to the end of this and we're about to end, I'm going to ask you the question I've been playing around with. Okay. If everything contains its opposite. Yes. Because the sine wave contains the polarities. Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of everything contains its opposite? Well, it would have to be that um it's the opposite of hmm well i think you stumped me on that one i think we need another podcast to explore that one there well i'm I, I throw that out there and i got 15 different answers from one person 15 uh, and, different answers yeah, yeah. And, and 
and a simple answer from one, which is yes. unity. Unity is the opposite of everything attains its opposite. Okay. But but in everything attains its opposite, like yin yang, there is unity in the yin yang symbol. So okay. that's not enough. It's already right there. It's what's the opposite of that yin yang. Everything contains is contained in that. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, the simplistic answer is everything is one. That's the opposite of that's of, the, that yeah, and that. So those that's, things are true. Every and and that every and and everything is one. I mean, everything is energy. Uh, I mean, we live in a field of energy, and there's these particular things that show up everywhere. So we're you know this table is is solid and energy simultaneously. They're happening, and as we are, as well, it, and, and we're separate, and we're also in this field of oneness together. And that is a nice simple answer. And uh, I may be stuck with that as the simple answer. <laughs> Intuitively, I know that's not enough. Um, yeah. Be, because the yin yang already does that. And that's what, mm -hmm. and, and the sine wave already does that. And the bell shaped curve okay. already, do, already does it. It, it, it can, each one contains the opposite in a unity. So okay. it, it's, it's there. Unity versus polarity is an important uh, under, polarity to understand unity mm -hmm. polarity and yes. maybe that's all we're talking about but it's already represented in those things so i'm still i'm still like uh no i i got, I, I, have a, I have another answer for you too which is which is the mystery so uh exploring the mystery is another name for creation and so it's a mystery what that is and and it's, that's it's for us to explore and that's and that's sort of the childlike take and i'll just i'll end with this that that the whole point, I mean, the, the integral Ken Wilber and all those guys, they talk about, you know, the need to include and transcend. And we're not including the child in us very much. And so we have to have that childlike awe and wonder and play. And play is the nature of, that's how a child learns. They're growing, they're playing. That's, that's their work is the play. That's how they learn. And that's, it, we didn't stop learning that well, that way when we, you know, turn 13 or something or turn to an adult, we still need to play as a way to maximize our capacity to assimilate information and, 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 and move with it and to integrate them. So um, good. That's it's a wonderful great playing place. with you. That's a wonderful, uh, that's, it's great playing with you, Josh. I mean, it, this, that's a great place to end the, the need to be better in touch with the child inside of us. And what I'm learning to do more is recognize the child in another person because yeah. that helps to play with that person to see that there's a child in there that I'm trying to be able to play with. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I look well, forward to playing with you again. <laughs> well, yeah. So, well, thanks for being on the show, Josh. Uh, it's fun playing with you. I agree. <laughs> That's so great. Thank you, man. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. This psychosphere is our mental atmosphere, like a hologram of cosmic consciousness.